Fellowship Church, where Jesus Christ is. Hallelujah. We thank God for you all on tonight. I'm so excited. I'm like a little kid. Amen. Because my brother is with me tonight. My Oasis family is with me tonight. My Kingdom Grace family is with me tonight. My sister in the Lord. Amen. District Missionary Sharon Blevins is with me tonight. Amen. My Apostle Apostle. Uh, Lord, I almost said Kava Jesus. God. Apostle Gibson, Kava's here too, <laughs> in spirit, but Apostle Celeste, just all of you all, we just thank you, thank yes. you, thank you for coming, you are welcome, have your way, it's my friends from Shiloh are back tonight, amen, I'm just thankful, amen. anybody thankful to be in the house of the Lord on tonight, and we have a preacher in the house, come on, y'all help me celebrate my brother, 
Dr. Walt Jordan. Come on, y'all. Y'all ought to be up on your feet celebrating this great man of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we're not going to prolong. As a matter of fact, well, we are going to do this. Everybody stand up. Y'all ready? Where my brother? Okay. We do this little song here. This is, this is our meet and greet. And, and, and the Lord gave Jason a little song. I think he gave it to you. I don't know where the song came from, to be honest with you. But I like it for meet and greet. So real quick, I, what I want you to do is go and greet three people. Find three people. Don't, don't just turn to the person you came to church with. Right, right, right. Go to somebody you don't know, somebody you didn't come to church with, somebody you ain't seen in a while, and greet them. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Also to our live stream audience, we thank you for watching and for tuning in. And I'm telling you, stay tuned in because this man of God Amen. that's coming is going to bless you. I'm so glad to Amen. see Mother Jones in the house tonight. Yeah, Amen. 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 Mother Owens, and I saw, oh God, Mother Massey. Yes, Amen. Amen. And see, I can't, if I start calling names, I'll mess up. So let me just leave that alone. Amen. All right, we're going to, at this time, we want to receive our offering. Amen. We thank God for what he is doing here at Kingdom Grace. Amen. amen. amen, amen. And uh, we're we not a begging church, so we just going to do, amen. Co-pastor is here. Y'all give it up for co-pastor Shirley Jordan. Amen. Amen. All right, so we just, we're going to ask you, we're just going to receive one offering. Amen. amen. We're not coming back later unless the Lord leads Dr. Walt to do something. That's between him and the Lord, but 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 we're going to do one offering. So I need everybody, please, to do your very, very, very best. We certainly want to be a blessing to the man of God. Amen. 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 Y'all ain't saying nothing. Amen. 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 We do an offering declaration here. I'm going to ask Prophetess Rhonda if she'll come. And I'm going to ask you all to not just hear this as words, but to hear it as a declaration. Amen. Amen. And, uh, and to believe this to be truth over your life. Yes. If you would please stand with your tithes and offerings, lift them to the Lord and repeat after me. Because we understand, because we understand our, biblical our biblical responsibility 
as worshipers, we bring our hearts to God, recognizing that we return to him in our tithes and offerings. For where our money is, is where our heart is. We pay the tithe because we owe God our vow. And we give our offerings, sowing seeds to reap fruit. We sow into our pastor to reap a prophet's reward. We sow into the church to reap kingdom benefit. As we cheerfully, as we cheerfully participate in giving and receiving, we have from the Lord jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits, sales, and commission, favorable settlements, estates and inheritances, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, and bills reduced, blessings and increase. I am out of debt. My needs are met. I have plenty more to put in store. Thank you, Lord, for teaching me how to be a godly giver and receiver. Bring your gifts to the Lord. Amen. If you'll just come from the rear, amen, from the rear, down the aisle. walking in increase. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm so glad to see Sister Joetta and her husband tonight. Amen. We thank God for both of them. Amen. Elder Gerald, we thank God for them. Now, I just cannot imagine that our speaker tonight is a stranger to anybody. I think everybody in Mansfield, Akron, Columbus, Ohio, Georgia, Tennessee, <laughs> Uh, the nation is familiar with Dr. Walter Earl Jordan II. We are so blessed to have him in our midst. He could be anywhere tonight. He could certainly be in a larger venue tonight. But we thank God that he thought enough of us to be here with us tonight. Amen. He is a brother beloved 
he and I just have such a wonderful, wonderful brother-sister relationship, one that I truly, truly thank God for. Oasis, you all know how I feel about you all. Y'all are my family, and I just wanted this first revival to be surrounded by folk that I know love me. Amen. 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 Y'all, y'all, y'all miss what I say, right? I wanted to be surrounded by folk that I knew love me. Amen. I'm sure there'll, there'll be a day when I had to put up with some folks that are secretly haters, but tonight is not that night. Amen. And so I'm just thankful. Thank you all again for coming. Mother, I kind of feel like I cheated you because you always do the response to the welcome. We good? Okay. All right. Amen. 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 Because y'all know she will, she will respond to the welcome. Amen. She will respond. So I'm going to ask Oasis's music ministry if they'll come at this time. Amen. And then however many your pastor tell you to do, one, two, whatever he tell you to do. And then after they will have ministered, the next voice that you will hear will be that of my brother, my friend, this tremendous man of God. He is at home, and so he has free reign to do whatever God has given him to do on tonight. Amen. Are y'all excited about hearing Dr. Walt? Can I get you just to one more time jump up on your feet and thank God for this man of God? Amen. 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 So after the music ministry, the next voice that you will hear will be that of Dr. Walter E. Jordan. Second.
He's an awesome, he's the awesome God. Give the Lord a shout of praise in this place. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Let's give God praise for Apostle Pastor Renee Collins. God bless you. Come on, let's give God praise for kingdom grace. Amen. Now give yourselves a hand. Give yourselves a hand. Thank the Lord for you. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of God. Got to see my mama here. Amen. Amen. I love you. To my district missionary, she's here. Amen. Amen. And to you. Where's my Oasis family? Holler at your boy. That's what I'm talking about, kid. What? Amen. It's good seeing you here and to our friends of Shiloh. We are so glad that, that we were invited to be here on tonight. Get out your Bibles. 
Wherever you have your scripture, get it, find it. He's a good Jesus, isn't he? All right, God. So good. Repeat after me, say, this is my Bible, my Father's Word. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. I'm a believer, not a doubter. I'm above and not beneath. Right now, my life will be changed for the better after having heard the word of faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Give God praise for a word, a message, a prophetic word. Father God, preach and have your way. Prophesy, deliver and set free and make whole. In the name of Jesus, be glorified. I'm available to you, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. It's a, it's a, a song we, we learned in Vacation Bible School. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, then I think they said your face would surely show it. If you're happy and you know it. Now, you know now, when people run into us, they ought to know that we're happy. They shouldn't be wondering or not, are they Christians? Are, have they been born again? Are they saved? If you're happy and you know it, then your life should surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, say amen. We're going to briefly talk about joy, the joy of the Lord. Is that all right? Very briefly in the name of Jesus. Psalm 16, 11. Psalm 16 and 11. It says, you will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forever more. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, then your face, your life, something should surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Now, we're going to talk about joy. What is joy? Joy is an unconditional state of peace. It's, it's God's shalom. Say shalom. It, it means there's nothing missing and nothing broken, but, but it's unconditional. It's an inward and an outward expression of great delight. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, then your face should surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, say amen. Amen. It's an inward and outward expression of great delight. Listen at this. Caused by God's exceptional goodness. It's not just from, from any source. But, but this joy that I have, it, it comes straight from God. It's from God's exceptional goodness. Psalm 1611, it says, you will show me the pathway of life. That, that, that's talking about the key of life or the lifestyle that a believer should have is, is one that is based upon the fullness of joy. And God, God's going to show us his key or his formula to experiencing a lifestyle of joy. Well, what is it? Well, in your presence is fullness of joy. So if you don't have no presence of God, you won't have no joy in your life. No presence, no joy. Uh, 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 the, the enemy is what we know as being a joy and a life stealer. John 10.10 10 says of the thief, the enemy, the devil, Hasatan, he comes but for to kill, steal, and destroy. But here comes Jesus, big daddy. I've come that you may have life to the full, to the overflows, life more abundantly. But what has happened in some of our uh, uh, Christology Christian circles is that uh, when life happens to us, we forget that we have an unconditional state of peace that we have access to. Uh, uh, when life happens to us, uh, if, if depression comes to us, or my word, drama, stress and drama, comes to our doorstep, we mishandle it. What do you mean, Pastor Walt? We mishandle depression, stress, and the vicissitudes of life. And what happens is... Uh, uh, when we mishandle depression, stress, and vicissitudes of life, it leads us to vices. The enemy tricks us 
into believing, listen at this, that God is not enough. Oh, yeah, I said it. That the enemy tricks us into believing that God is not enough. So then what the enemy does, the thief will supply us with temporary and counterfeit joy. Uh-huh. I'm going to come down your road. Sometimes it's, it's simply through through overeating. Temporary and counterfeit joy. To, this is how we handle our stressors. But, you know, when we get stressed out or upset or depressed or downtrodden or discouraged, we go and get one of Jones chocolate cakes and eat the whole thing. Late in the midnight hour. Amen to that. Can the food and, and 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 or money you you or, or drugs. I'm talking about church folks. Some of the best weed I've ever smoked has been with the saints. Amen. 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 Some of the best Patron I've ever drank has been with the saints. Some of the best Hennessy I've ever had top shelf has been with. Matter of fact, I didn't even smoke with people in the streets. I smoke with the saints. Memphis, St. Louis, Full Gospel, Kojic, Baptist, Apostolic, Kingdom Connection, and Disconnected. I smoke with the saints. Because the enemy, what he does is he tricks us into thinking, God, God ain't enough. Because I asked, I said, why, why do we ask? People that speak in tongues and carrying on. Why do we go to vices when life happens to us? And he, he told me, you really don't believe that I am enough. You really don't believe that I am who I say I am. Okay, so, so, now, so now it says, in his presence is fullness of joy. Now the same word here for the presence of God is the same word that is used in Genesis when, 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 when Jacob named the, the place where he met God, Peniel. It's the same word of, the, of presence. Jacob, Jacob, the angel, some say the Lord, some say the angel, it was a heavenly being. The angel asked, asked Jacob, well, what's your name? Before you get this breakthrough, before I change anything in your life, what, what, what's, what's your name? And I said, Lord, why'd you ask him what his name was? He said, sometimes in order to receive what I have for you, you have to first deal with what you're dealing with. You, you can't, it's like, it's like when I was growing up, when I was 13 years old, and I was going to the conventions, and I would be in Strongsville at my uncle and aunt's house, Uncle John and Aunt Annie's house at the conventions, and I would be outside playing, and I would come inside, and I wouldn't take a shower before I went to the convention. I would just put cologne over funk and must and dirt. And that's what some of us do. We, wanna, we don't want to clean up. We just want to come to church. He, he's good. The Lord is good. We want to come to church and go through the Christian calisthenics without being cleaned up. And it's like putting cologne over sweat. So he asked him, the Lord, the angel asked him, what's your name? He said, trickster. You know, and, and some, the Lord's really asking, before you really receive this deposit of my presence, who are you really? Some of us need to say, I'm perversion. I'm a weed dealer and a deacon. And I, 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 I deal it and I smoke it. I, 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 what's your name, Patron? What's your name? Chocolate cake. It ain't just for people that's, because you have a drug of your own. It may not be from the street pharmacist, but you have something that you deal with, issues in your tissues. Oh, don't, don't sit and look at me like you, Alice in Wonderland. I know what the Lord said. Yeah, what's your name? It may be anger. What's your name? Unforgiveness. What's your name? I'm depressed and I'm fearful and, and I'm mad at God. What's your name? I'm, I'm really disillusioned. What's your name? Disappointment. God is asking us tonight, before you get joy, you got to deal with the, the joy still left. The, the joy still left. Ja Jacob wrestled with the angel and he, and he said this. This is my jam here. He said, I will not let go until you bless me. I will not let go until you bless me. He, he, was, he was willing to praise until something happened. Are you willing to pray and praise until something? Are you willing to turn over your plate 
until something are you willing to 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 depend on God and seek God for you oh oh come on here. is there anybody that's willing to praise until you get a breakthrough are you going to be like Jacob and say you know what I'm not going to let go until you bless me he had to come face to face with his issue and and he had to come face to face with God and and really even with all you're facing with all the vicissitudes and issues in your tissues, you have to take all of that and face God, face his face with all that you're facing. Face, the only way you're going to get really true, true deliverance is to face what you're facing. And to, not just you face it, but face God with what you face. Show him everything. Listen, I'm a witness. You got to tell him everything. Now look, we want everything from God, but don't want to give him everything. I'm here to talk to at least one person who wants to be truly delivered. You got to be real. Show him everything. The, the truth will make us free. We got to take off the mask in the church. Take off the mask and stop sweeping stuff up under the sanctified rug. We got to stop sweeping mess up under the rug. We got to stop sweeping sin up under the rug. We have to stop sweeping disappointment up under the rug. If your disappointment, just admit it and let God heal you. He can't heal what you won't deal with. If you hurt in your heart and you, you're feeling some kind of way, as they say, you need to tell God I'm hurting my heart and I'm feeling some kind of way. We have trained you how to be the most deceitful, lying group of people that is on the earth. We have trained you how to lie and not come in here. But, and you must understand, the altar is for the saints. You think it's for the sinner? No, the altar is for the saints. Preach, walk. The altar is for the saints. The altar is for the saints. He said, uh, I will show you. He said, I'll show you the key to this lifestyle of joy in his presence is fullness of joy. In his, if I can just get in his presence with all the baggage I'm carrying, with all the stuff I didn't dealt with, something, the Holy Ghost nickname is something, something on the inside tells me if I could just get in his presence. Have you ever slipped over from depression and sorrow into the presence of God if, 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 if I could just get in his presence if if you can just get in it how 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 do I how do I get in it because in his presence is fullness of joy now 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 and, and, and now how do I get over into his presence when the Bible tells us in, in, in Psalm 22 and 3 that he lives in or inhabits the praises of his people. Yeah. Psalm 104 says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. And so so when, you, when you praise him, you have to praise him with, with great expectation because something happens to the praiser. Now, now, now when, when you are a praiser and, and even though you may have issues and hurts and pains, something happens when somebody who's dealing with some hurts and pains and issues, something happens to a praiser. It's like you get God's attention. You don't just create an atmosphere for yourself. You don't, but you, you literally, you literally get 
God's attention. That's one thing for the stuff you're going through to get God's attention. And it does. It does get God's attention. He, he, he doesn't like to see us hurt and crying and, and fearful and upset. But it's one thing for, for your stuff you dealing with to get God's attention. But it's yet another thing that when you say, you know what? I'm going to be like David and bless the Lord at all times. And I'm not denying what I'm going through, but but what I'm going through is not more powerful than the source I need to go to. Have you ever praised him and you weren't feeling nothing? You you weren't feeling emotional. You didn't feel like going to church. You didn't feel like living holy. You didn't feel like reading the Bible, but you praised him. Where are the real praisers at? That you you praise him. You praise him. In, anyway, in, anyway, in his presence is fullness of joy. Now, that, that, that what bothered me, Deacon, was the word full, fullness, fullness of joy. I said, now, Lord. So I looked it up in my Strong's Concordance, because I believe that Strong's Concordance is strong. So I looked it up in the Strong's Concordance, and hear what it say. Hear what it say. What it say, Walt. Hear what it say. Fullness of joy. Now, it ain't just, now, it, it ain't just joy. Yeah, in his presence is joy. Huh, that would have been all right with me. Amen. In his, is that all right with you? In his presence is joy. That's good. But why he got to mess around and say, in his presence is fullness of joy. Hear, hear what the, oh, hear what, it, hear what Strong say. It said, in his presence is God's kind of joy. It, and then it messed around and kept on saying stuff. Mom. It said, Hear what it say, what it say, well, hear what it say. It say, God's joy, his satisfaction, and his abundance. God's so satisfaction. So in his presence, that's good, is fullness of God's joy. Not, not human kind of joy, but it's God's joy. Not, not physical joy, but it's, it's a, okay, God's joy. God is a spirit. Those that worship must worship in spirit and truth. Uh, uh, this type of joy uh -huh, can only be received and embraced by your spirit. Uh -huh. There are some type of joys that go beyond your mental capacity to understand and explain. Uh -huh. God's kind of joy can only be received by your spirit. Come on. In Corinthians, it's, it, it says, I has not seen, uh -huh, ear has not heard, neither has it into the mind of man the things that God has prepared that the natural thing cannot comprehend. But it has been revealed, verse 10, to, to the spirit because the spirit searches the things of God. Yes, even the deep things of God. The spirit then, the spirit of God uh, taps into your spirit and it breathes in a God kind of joy. Why does it have to be received in a spirit? Well, because this type of joy that God gives goes beyond your mental capacity. To, it doesn't make any sense. In other words, the joy of the Lord is ridiculous. The, the joy of the Lord it doesn't make any sense. The God kind of joy, you can be right in the middle of chaos, right in the middle of darkness and hear the Lord say, let there be light. That, that, that kind of, of, of joy. The, the joy. The joy of the Lord cannot be compared to any human uh, uh, faculty. It cannot be compared to any human capacity. It cannot be compared to any human ability. Has anybody other than Walt ever experienced like the God kind of don't make no sense where is this joy coming from? I should be curl, I should be curled up somewhere in a ball, sucking my thumb, going cuckoo for cocoa puffs. Have you ever? And then now check it out now, and because I just heard somebody say I was balled up and I was curled up in a ball, but what got you out of that ball and all that was the joy of the Lord, the pre because in His presence. Uh, it's fullness of joy even for those of us who did lose our minds temporarily the reason why they got our mind back was because of the presence of the Lord yes the joy it just don't make no sense have you ever experienced a joy that just don't make no kind of sense okay that's good that's good in his presence is fullness of joy then it goes on to say verse 11 and at his right hand are pleasure forevermore pleasures forevermore and really that that word looked at up to in the strong strong's concordance and and the word pleasure is also joy so in his presence full of joy and at his right hand is joy forevermore. So the Lord was saying what we're used to as, as born again, spirit filled believers is what I call uh, temporary fixes. We, we get, uh, we put a band-aid over a gunshot wound. 
we come to church for a revival and we get emotional. I love emotionalism. We shout. I love to shout. We roll around. I love to roll around. We speak in tongues. I love speaking in tongues. We get prophesied over. I will prophesy. But now, we, we come to church and then once we leave here, there's no lasting change. We just felt good. Get the tape. Go over the tape nine times until you believe it. Get the CD. We're selling CDs in the back. You got to get it. Faith comes by hearing. And they got to do all these tricks. And, and But there's something about the real presence of God. When you access the presence of God, it will absolutely change your life forever. Forever. Have you ever felt your life change just by one touch from God? It don't take two or three touches. You can get touched by God one time and that thing will last you a lifetime. It says, in his presence is fullness of joy and at his right hand are pleasures evermore. That means after the revival, your spirit ought to be on fleek and on point because something happened when my, my, my mortal man touches a divine God. And when a divine God touches my spirit, there ought to be lasting change. I should not go home tonight and forget everything that happened to my spirit, man. I should not get up in the morning and forget about what God deposited in my spirit, man. I should not go to church Sunday after Sunday. Tuesday after Tuesday, Wednesday after Wednesday, fasting and praying up and down, doing a seesaw trick. I should not feel some kind of way today and another kind of way tomorrow. There ought to be some lasting joy. I did not say life would not happen, but when it happens to me, my response to life is I will bless the Lord. My response to life is I will rejoice. I will rejoice. So, so, so it says here, uh, our, our pleasures evermore. And, and that now, now this in the Hebrew, this means it says your spiritual, mental, and physical man will receive delight from the Lord, as if you see people dancing, singing, and playing musical instruments. When people look at your life. They should look at you like somebody who is in a constant mode of dancing, singing, and playing a musical instrument. That's what this, that's what this says here. In, in other words, your, your spirit will be being and doing what God's joy says you are to be being and doing. Because listen at this. Listen at, at his right hand are pleasures forevermore. It literally says this in the Hebrew that you will experience God's strength, God's victory, God's endurance. I like this word here. God's everlastingness. Listen to that. Now look, I come against these religious things. Look, it said here that, listen to this. Now, Listen, listen, because it don't make sense. I understand that. You're like, now what? Now, we can't all, I hear some people right now saying, now you can't always just be in all that. The Bible say. <laughs> hear what the Bible say. Where is Elder Bryson? Hear what Paul say. And the Bible say, at his right hand, our pleasure forevermore. So now, you ought to be experiencing God's strength, God's victory. Preach, walk. Well, this is good. God's endurance. Listen to this, Jordan. God's everlastingness. All right. Okay. Okay. I, I, see, I see the crowd. I'm dealing with Jesus. How many of y'all have a phone? A phone? A cellular phone. Amen to that. Mom, you got, she got a cellular phone? Look at it. She got it out with scriptures on it. My phone is absolutely horrendous. If I don't keep my phone on the charger, it does not work like it should. Now, I would be ignorant if I would just take my phone to sprint every time it is not charged up. And I go to Sprint and I tell them, my phone is not working like it should. And they look at me and say, Reverend, 
Reverend Jordan. <laughs> Let me see what's wrong with the phone. I said, it won't work. It won't come on. I can't call out. I can't receive calls in. This is preaching here. I can't receive an incoming call. I can't receive an outgoing call. Oh, that's good there. It just don't work like it's supposed to. None of my contacts are in here. I can't access nothing that the phone advertised I would be able to do. I can't access nothing. Well, Mr. Jordan, when is the last time you charged it? Well, I didn't. I charged it Sunday at, when I was at church. You know, I got my Bible out Sunday at church, and I charged it then. When, when was the last time you charged it? Well, I had, well the problem with the phone is it's, it's not Sprint. Mm-mm. No, it's, it's just the fact that you have not connected it to the source that keeps it charged up. And so when the Lord say you will experience God's everlasting joy, everlasting strength, everlasting victory, it's all based upon how much you stay connected with the source. So now look at this. Look at this. So don't get mad at me if I'm always running in victory, walking in favor, running and leaping and praising God, overcoming obstacles, being delivered day in and day out. Because see, you know, I stay charged up. I get up in the morning with a praise on my lips. I get up saying, what we going to do today, Lord? And I get up saying, make my day. 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 So, 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 no, no. so, so I stay charged up. And the thing for, for other people who are charged up, don't, don't, don't let the haters steal your joy. Now, 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 I'm going to tell you this, Joy. I'm going to tell you this. Now, you can't let the, the haters steal your joy because what's going to happen is, what's going to happen is, here, 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 when, you, when you get plugged into God through, through your relationship, staying in his presence, 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 in his presence, in his presence. when you do that, things are going to start changing in your life. Once they start changing, don't you let these uncircumcised Philistines don't you let them steal your joy. Because I'm going to tell you, I'm going to explain something to you about this here, this joy thing. Now, uh, 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 about a month and a half ago, I had the flu. I had the flu, or it had me, one of the two, I, and it was for maybe four or five days. Do you remember that? I had that. And um, so after, after I recovered from the flu, I, I, I recognized that my spirit, man, was on an all-time low. Have y'all seen that commercial with Snickers, and they had the people there, and they said, oh, my God, if you don't hurry up and get you a Snickers, that's how Walt was. I said, what is wrong with me? I feel like the devil, Jesus. I'm going to hell, Lord, forgive me. That's how I felt. Because... Because I didn't care what you say. That's why we got to pray for people who are sick. I could not pray for myself like I was used to. I was laying, I, I'm used to praying at least three times a day now. I lay out on the floor. I do, I pray. And I built myself up to that prayer life. And then once it stopped, and I, I thought, oh my, I can't preach to nobody, Jesus. My God, my God. And you, but, but, the, but what God showed me was the difference between being prayed up charged up and not being prayed up. I don't know how in the world we as church folk make it from day to day without being connected to the charger. Yeah, 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 yeah. So 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 in his presence, stay on focus. Stay here. They get mad at you. Stay charged up. <laughs> the Bible says that 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 the Lord wants our, our joy to be full. And, and he wants our joy to remain. All right? That's, so we have to get connected and stay charged up uh, uh, from the source of, of God. Amen. Uh, because really, these other vices that, that we use, uh, it, they're really temporary. And they are counterfeit. Amen? And, and you, don't, you don't need that. Uh, because happiness, see, happiness depends on happenings. But joy totally is dependent on God. Nothing else. It's just totally dependent on God. So you have to learn how to rejoice no matter what your condition is like. You have to take authority over your own atmosphere. I, it doesn't matter. Listen, I'm telling you, uh, uh, you 
have to take authority over your own atmosphere. Joy is a choice. Victory is a choice. Deliverance is a choice. It's a choice, okay? So you have to to choose to uh, uh, not not just just uh, come to revival to get a spiritual hiccup, but come to revival to be changed. Amen. Amen. Nope. The song said, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, then your life and your faith should surely show it. If you happy and you know it, say amen. As I close, as I close, my dad used to sing a song. It's not real. My dad, my dad used to sing a song. The plant, this is real, but this is not. Listen to this. Y'all not even ready for this. L- listen. Y'all think I'm joking because I'm always playing with the plants at Oasis. Listen to this. This is how some of us are. Hanging out with stuff that's not real. Oh, you weren't ready. But then you want the joy of the Lord. It doesn't work like that. I'm, I'm, I'm serious with that. You have to guard that anointing and guard that joy. It don't just come because I want I want to be happy, oh God. It comes from denying being denied. Denying discouragement. Oh, God, help me. I'm trying to help somebody be real. I didn't say discouragement wasn't going to come. I'm showing you what to do with discouragement. Come on, y'all. Listen. Oh, okay. I'm just going to say that. I have been through more mental battles than a little bit. But what kept my mind was me staying charged up with God. And I didn't do it. It, I just showed up and the Lord filled me up. And it's not because I did anything. All I did was show up and the Lord filled me up. I'm trying to help somebody. Oh God. You just don't know what your neighbor has gone through and how they made it out. Look. Look, look, if it was up to the devil, Joetta wouldn't even be sitting here today. But she, she opened up her mouth and said, I will live. All this stuff is a choice, y'all. Uh, 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 and here's what the Lord showed me. He said, he said now, now, you've been wanting people to validate you. You've been wanting stuff to validate you. You've been wanting promotion to validate you. You've been wanting folk to to vote for you and to to like you. And and God says, if you would just allow me to validate you, allow my power in you to validate you. Man, look, look, Tiffany was singing tonight up under an anointing. But that's a choice. That's a choice to to, to, to choose to, I'm not going to look at my circumstance. I'm going to look at the one who holds the world in his hand. I'm just saying that because it ain't, woo, it ain't always easy just to get up here and perform. And y'all sit there and cross your legs and suck on your teeth and roll your eyes and, and judge. Why isn't Joetta singing tonight? It ain't easy. You don't know the hell people go through from day to day. And then we still have to believe God. I want the joy of the Lord. People will lie on you, talk about you, reject you, dog you out. People who are so, supposed to be your ride or die people, your ride or die friends, they will lie on you. They will dog you. And then the first thing they hear about you, they'll say, yeah, I believe I believe Walt did that. I believe he did. And then it'll get back to you. Then you got to still get up here and tell me, the joy of the Lord is my strength. When I tell you, it's not something easy, but it's real. 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 And what the church needs now, Father, I thank you. What the Lord's church needs now is an overdose of the Holy Ghost. We do. We just do. We we can't make it without the power and the presence of the Lord. Y'all dealing with uh, issues with your children or issues with your spouses or or, or the fact that you don't have 
uh, any of the above. You're just dealing with stuff. Everybody has some cross to bear. My dad said, in spite of all I've been through, I still have my joy. May not have a house, may not have a spouse, may not have a car, may not have a promotion, but I still have my joy. How was that? Well, this joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. <laughs> Since the world didn't give it to me, I'll be doggone if they take it away. Oh, no. And it's real. This joy is genuine. It ain't something that's made up. It's unconditional. You don't know if I'm having a good day or a bad day because I trust God every day. Every day. Every day. Stand on your feet if you can. If you can't, don't even worry about it. Lord, help us Ooh. and overtake us. Forgive us for all of our sins. I'm not going to call them mistakes. It's sin. Forgive us for sin. Cleanse us from unrighteousness. Fill us with the Holy Ghost. In the matchless name of Jesus, I dare you to give God 30 seconds of of real worship and praise worship and praise because he's God he's God alone he's God he's God alone come on praise him he's God he's God alone uh, he's God ooh he's God alone yeah he's God he's God he's God come on praise him open your mouth just praise him anyway. 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 This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. The presence of God is here. You may be seated in the presence. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you for your joy. Glory to God. Thank you for your peace. Glory to God. Thank you for your help. Glory to God. Thank you for your love. Glory to God. Stand up. Stand up. Yep. You stand up with an elder. That's good. Wow. The glory of the Lord is all around you. The Lord says, whatever you speak out of your mouth concerning your life, it would be like on earth as it is in heaven. Heaven hears your words. When you speak them out of your mouth, angels are on assignment to bring that thing into fruition. You have to really speak what you want to see. You can't, you can't give up none. Not even a little bit. Doctors are confirming what God did over 2,000 years ago. That they, I know in sense knowledge, that they have declared you to be cancer free. Here's what the Lord says. Now, I'm going to cause you to be worry-free. Because it's, it's some things you've been praying for for seven and eight years. Seven and eight years. Now, I'm tired. Now, this is getting on. Now, now, now. And then you kind of give up on it. God says, speak it again. This time, thank him for it. Lord, I thank you. You heard me. As a matter of fact, listen to this. You're not ready for this part. He said, I'm the, who, who you think gave you the idea to pray what you've been praying? It was the Lord. <laughs> so in the name of Jesus, the, the Lord is opening up a lot of doors 
for you, just like that globe. You, he's opened up a lot of doors. You have a lot of faith with people, but you're going to share your testimony to a lot of people. Don't limit God. He won't limit you. Don't limit God. He won't limit you. Don't limit God. He won't limit you. Father, we thank you for a fresh anointing. We thank you, Father God, oh, for the strength of God, the victory of God, and the endurance of God is hers. In the name of Jesus, we thank you now. Be seated in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus, for added strength, God, and for the elder. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, it is so. Give you praise and glory. Crystal Nabry, come on up. Come on up. Thank you, Jesus. Just lift up your hands and praise the Lord. Like he's been trying to break you, break you down. Break you. Jesus' name. Co pastor. Co pastor. We don't ever, I don't ever prophesy over my. Could you come up, please? Just to my witness. I don't prophesy to my mother privately or publicly, and it just irritates her. But the Lord prophesies to you today, okay? So just receive that. Oh, just lift up your hands. My God. I am opening doors that no man other than you can shut. I'm opening up doors that no man other than you can shut. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. This is crazy because of what I, what I see. You have uncommon favor, unusual grace. And the Lord said, I have restored 21 years yes. of your life. Yes. I did that for two reasons, so that I can get glory out of your story, and so that you can enjoy days on the earth. He said, you missed out on so much growing up. You just, it's, just a, it's just a shame. You missed out on so much growing up. And God said, I'm going to make it up to you if you let me. And... As the woman of God lays hand on you, the gifts you had at age four and five, you started seeing stuff at a, at a young age, but people didn't believe you, but God would speak to you at a very young, four and five. The gift that you had then that you asked him to take away because it was weird and you did not want to look like a weird person, God said, I'm going to restore it tonight. Lay hands, lay hands on her in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The, come on, rejoice, y'all. Rejoice. Somebody else. your hands, man. When I was driving here, I remember seeing your dad in the natural, like, one time in my life, and I don't even know where. But he had, when I saw him, he had, a, like, a gray beard or something. He looks like, just like you. Just like you. Well, when I was driving tonight, I saw his face, and it wasn't about him. It was about you. Because 
I saw like an older version of you. It's just crazy. God is going to accelerate you spiritually, right? And like she had, she really had prophesied today when she said, I think Jason wrote that song, whether you did or not. God says he's, he's giving you songs. He's going to give you like songs. They're going to be like, now what, what in the world is... What in the world is, what is this about? Where did he come from? And, and, and they're going to ask you, well, who wrote that? Because they're not even going to assume that you wrote it. Because it's going to be from the Holy Ghost. God gave me revelation oh, 11 years ago that there was still, uh, still music in heaven that Lucifer never tapped into. And it's, I saw it, literally I saw it. And he will give it to those who ask for it. It's just sitting there wasted. Like stuff in the storehouse. You're one of those ones that he would like to release that music to. That's why the enemy fights you like crazy with every, all kind of foolishness. He, he's an idiot. Anytime the enemy comes after somebody, it's because you are a threat to his camp. He was a chief musician. He hates you. So that's why we pray for you. And we put a hedge around you. But get ready. Come here, apostle. Put your hands on his ears so that he will open up his spiritual ears to hear those notes from heaven is keys, chords that have not even been released in the earth realm. Oh, it's God. That's it. Come on, give God praise, y'all. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Amen. Come here, Doc. Come here, Doc. Y'all got to be praying for these folks when they come up here. You got to be praying because half of them be scared. What are you going to say? I'm scared, Jim. Don't be scared. I ain't. A, I, <laughs> if it's something mean, I ain't gonna use a microphone. Lift up your hands. You have absolutely gone to another dimension in God, I, and it's just—it's it's almost like it happened overnight. Tuesday in prayer, you ran some demons up out of there. You was up there for prayer, and I said, "You pray for the people next to you." Once you did deliverance, did you see deliverance starting? To, it just started to happen. God showed me on Tuesday that promotion has come to your life because you've been faithful. And you never told me this, but because when people would talk about Pastor Walt, I see you in your shop saying, now you're not going to talk about my pastor. Now I'm seeing you right now defending Walt. And that's fine. I love it. That's good because I defend you. So now that, that I see you defend but because of that, where's that flag? Where's the flag? Let's just wave. Just start waving. The flag. Wave, wave the flag. This is what God is doing. I'm, I'm waving trouble away. I'm waving fear away. I'm waving sickness away. I'm waving depression away. And here comes a new anointing. Here comes a new anointing. Here comes fresh ideas. Here comes favor even in your shop. He's going to start sending folk. I, Pastor, I had so, so many people coming in. I got to hire folk. He's going to send folk to get their hair done and cut. Because I'm waving it away. Okay. Look at, look at me. Look at me. It's some hurt. Look. Now, somebody called and said, you got, somebody called and said, is your name Walter Jordan? Yeah, it's a couple of us. He said, he said now you got unclaimed funds uh, in Ohio. I, do I really? Now, I really, if I do, I want to get it. I just heard God say that you have unclaimed blessings that, that was left in Georgia. It's like this. And it's not money. It's, it's, there are spiritual blessings that your ancestors never walked in. And I just see it looking for a place to go. The blessings of God. He said they, they traveling up to Ohio at the speed of light. The, the blessing. And it's about to overtake you. <laughs> The blessings of God, generational blessings, wisdom, unusual wisdom. He's going to open up your eyes. You'll be able to see and discern like never before. And yes, yes, your daughter Oriana has an anointing. And you've been seeing it and it's been scaring you because she'll say something. And you're like, now that's just getting crazy. Don't, don't be afraid of the anointing. She, the reason why God brought her to you is so that you can raise up an anointed prophet. Get ready to go to that next dimension. 
Right here, right in the middle. Can I prophesy over you? Is that all right? Will you receive? Will you? Can I? I'll say about you. Oh my God. Joan, Joan, you come up. I need a witness. Is it all right if I prophesy to her? Amen. Let me, let me, let me explain something to you. God loves you more than you can. Imagine. Here's the place. You love your pastor, but you, you more so than that, you love Jesus. You are, you are different. You are radical, but you have an authentic relationship with Adonai. You have an unusual relationship with God. You see things that other folks don't see. You have an unusual accuracy, but God is showing me even in, even in the natural. Because you've been faithful to this house. You've been faithful to him. Don't ask for nothing for you. You're always praying for everybody else. Lord, I see. Lord, bless the nations. Lord, bless the third world countries. I'm all, you're always praying for everybody but you. Well, it's your birthday. It's your birthday. It's your birthday. <laughs> Amen. And God, God's about to bless your socks off. Come on, co-pastor. He's about to bless your socks yes. off because you have refused you and you have decreased so he can increase. God said, I'm about to show up increase in the spirit, in, in your natural, in your mind, and in every area of your And you're going to start singing. The, you're going to like this part. Listen to this. The prayers you've been praying for other people secretly and they don't know you're praying, you're going to start singing proof and evidence that God heard you when you pray. Lay hands on her head in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Y'all point towards her. In the name of Jesus. It's a done deal. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Amen. I love you, girl. Glory to God. Amen. She loved her past. Lord, come in. Uh, Elder Russell. Linda, come on up. Thank you, Lord. Lift up your hands. There is a desire. Okay, okay. I, this is you talking. I desire more fire. There's a desire in you for, for more fire. You saw it. You sensed it. But then it's, it's not, it's not, it's like the truck, my phone. It, it hasn't stayed lit up, charged up. It's been a lot of distractions, a whole lot of natural distractions, a whole lot. And it ain't, it's from the enemy. 
because the enemy knows once you stay on fire, it's going to be very contagious. You have like the type of desire to see a revival break out. I mean, like you, you're seeing stuff, but you ain't seeing it happen. But you see, so it's like a, it's like you almost discouraged a little bit, just a little bit. Still, but not losing faith. But like, nah, I see more than this. God has literally created a hunger and a thirst in you for more of Him. It's not you. God has put this vacuum in you that only He can fill. On the count of three, we'll lay hands on you and ask God to fill you with this fire that you saw. Are you ready for it? Okay, all right. One, two, three. Fire of God. Everybody praise the Lord for 30 seconds. There's a, 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 a transfer. You got to press in. Come on, come on. Let's go. Press in. Press in. There's a fire. There's a fire. But you got to have a desire for the fire. If you want that fire, you got to go for it right now. If y'all want fire, at God, send the fire. Send revival fire. Send revival fire in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. 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 Uh, I keep calling you the wrong name, title. Lord, I'm about to get in trouble. Thank you, Jesus. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Matter of fact, girl, Linda, matter of fact, that he said the key to all this stuff is praise. He, that's what he just told me. Your prescription for fire is to amp up your praise. He said now, instead of having one dose of, of praise a day, go to four doses of praise every day. And watch revival happen in you and through you. You will praise him four times a day and watch. Watch the fire break out. Watch. I'm telling you what he just told me. That's your prescription. Go on somewhere. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's what I do at home. I mess with the flowers. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. All right. Well, this, uh, it's a, come on, stand in the middle here. Oh, this is good eating here. Okay. Come here, Coco. And come here, Apostle. Y'all stand on each side of her. Each side of her. Stand on each side of her. Uh-huh. All right, play something nice and floral. All right. I'm taking my good look. Now here we now look. Do you see these? Look at look at them. Look at just look at them. See, look at them. Look at them. Just, just like you can see them. The Lord's gonna open up your spirit to where you're gonna see the angels that are literally around you. You have you have the presence of angels around you. And you're gonna you're gonna see it. You're gonna see it. A lot of things that the enemy wanted to happen uh, recently did not happen because they said no no <laughs> no not no not this time around not not this time around no no and I, I heard uh, one word twice and that is enough is enough now and, and listen to this. enough is enough for you to do everything I've placed in your hands to do when you were in your mother's womb, she spoke in tongues. There was an anointing in her womb when she was carrying you. And she was a prophetess herself. And she knew she was carrying a prophetess. She knew that in her womb was a baby prophetess in her womb. But she also saw down the road what the enemy would put in your way. But guess what, devil? She's here. 
She's here. She's here. And she's lethal. She's dangerous. She's dangerous. She's dangerous. But I'm going to ask you to do one thing. I'm very discreet. Prophetess Bright, can you, will you take your glasses off? And will you hold them for her? The Lord says, I said to take your glasses off because what I have in store for you, compared to what you've seen prior to, says you ain't seen nothing yet. And you've seen a lot. You've seen uh, demons cast out, people get filled with the Holy Ghost, saved, healed, all that kind of thing. He said, now, what this, this next generation anointing that I have for you, it's going to be likened to those guys who were called apostles in, in, in the New Testament. That when they walked past folk, they was getting healed. People look at you and they expect, let me tell you something. He said, the reason why it's going, not nothing weird, spooky, or non-biblical. He said, the reason why people will be healed just by you being around them is because people expect the anointing to come out of you. Even when you ain't trying to walk and flow in nothing. He said, there's an expectation for you to be anointed. So God said, I'm going to give you triple. He said this weeks ago, I'm going to give you triple for all the stuff you've gone through. One for the Father, those for the Son, and the those for the Holy Ghost. I'm going to give you triple, 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 triple. And yes, you have seen, you've seen, yeah, okay, you've seen the latter rain packed. You've seen, I mean, like, with bladder rain people, not events, not all that kind of stuff. You you seen saints coming in, and you but I see you laughing. God says I want you to go lay hands on every pew and start laughing, cause I'm about to bring new birth to bladder rain. New birth. Listen at this, but I had to first get that building up under the hand of the enemy. Is that correct? He had, but it was a, it wasn't a natural transaction. It was spiritual. Yeah, it was a spiritual transaction. He said, watch what comes into that building now. But it's going, it's not going to be a long process because you've labored. I see you like praying on your face type thing. Not just walking, but I see you literally on your face. It's that stuff on your face. Them prayers right there is what he about to answer. And I hear you asking the question. When, now, I'm living holy. I literally hear you say, can I say it in the microphone? I'm living holy, and I'm doing right. Now, what about us? Did you say that to him? What about us? Now, I see other raggedy living folk, and they got all kind of, now, what, now what's up now? To, as it pertains to ministry, right? And God said, I was just waiting. I saved the best wine for last. <laughs> it's called ladder rain. But you, that's what you've been waiting. You told me to wait when you named the church. <laughs> Ladder. Don't do that. Don't do that, D. Ladder. So now, listen to this. Be going to all three lay hands on you because there's going to be a triple impartation, a triple blessing. It's just going to be crazy. Natural, spiritual for your ministry and for the ministry of, of Ladder Rain. All right? And it's just, it's just, he's just, he's heard all, all kind of prayers. You have some like some serious prayers. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. Bye. Come on, give the Lord praise in this place. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise.
Somebody watching needs to hear it. The enemy has tried to put spirit of rejection on you from the age of six. I'm seeing an age of six. Spirit of rejection on you to absolutely destroy your life and to keep you from ministry, from Christianity, from being a son of God. God says, I am going all the way to age six and I am turning situations and I'm bringing healthy healing in the mind and for all the stuff that happened to you for all the shame the Bible says I will give you double for the shame but look you're not going to have to ask for it but every enemy that bet against you that says he'll never ever be truly saved. They will see my hand on you. They will see the hand of God. And some will come and ask you, what must I do to be saved? Fresh anointing in the name of Jesus. Restore his life. Restore his years. Restore his life. Get some glory out of his story. In the name of Jesus. As ne be released in the name of Jesus. Be released in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Y'all point towards this man of God. Say, man of God, come forth now. Yeah. 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 In Jesus' name, it's a done deal. Can't do nothing with you. Come on, woman of God. Oh, now come on, now her turn. Y'all stand on each side of me. My goodness. Just lift your hands up and then put them down. And put them down. You are a crazy praiser. You just love praising them. And it irritates you when people do not praise and when they sit down looking like Alice in Wonderland. You are a fanatical, radical, very prophetic person. You literally live for the deeper things of God. You like and love and desire God's structure, not just what you've seen, not just what you were raised in, not just what you experienced. You want God's exact blueprint for the ministry that he's given you. He's telling me that he's going to show you how to execute the anointing that he's placed in your life. I will be your teacher. I will teach you myself. You'll have coverings and you'll have connections. But I will be your teacher. There will be a moment of consecration between you and God where he will speak to you. You will chronicle it. It will be God. It will be confirmed when the man from Georgia shows up here. He will confirm what God has already told you. 
He will not bring information. He will bring confirmation so that you will know that it is I who will teach you and show you how to execute this anointing. Guess what? You've never seen the anointing in operation the way that I'm going to operate through you. So stop trying to see it in other camps traveling all over the place to see an anointing that I have placed on the inside of you. In order to see it manifested, you must look in the mirror and say, oh, that's where it is. You don't have to compete, not with no joker. You don't have to, and, and, (sighs) (sighs) people will talk. And if they did not talk, you'd have to wonder, well, do I carry a real anointing or not? People who are anointed are those who are talked about. People who carry the spirit of God are those who are talked about. Don't look at rejection negatively. Look at it as a validation that God's stamp is on you. Did not they reject my son? You will be rejected by men, but accepted in the beloved. There will be an undeniable anointing in this ministry. It will be a healing center. Do you have the right name? The right name, they, Kingdom Grace. Because you're going to show people the grace of the kingdom. It is not being shown in many of my temples. A lot of my temples have become country clubs. Where they simply take an application. You're good enough. You're not. We'll take you. We won't take you. You're not good enough. God says because you have allowed people have talked about. they too loose. She's too loose. She's this, this with the people. She's holy. But what about this? What about that? She knows that's going on. God says you will show them the grace of the kingdom. And develop these warriors. And cause them to walk in holiness. Which is not a religion but a lifestyle. You longed for it. You've been longing for this for years and years and years. Women, women's aglow. I see you going to women's aglow. I see you going to all kind of just craziness. Years ago, just looking for stuff, looking for going up to Milwaukee, going, going, traveling to Louisiana, traveling all to uh, uh, Virginia, New Jersey. Going everywhere, just going every which way. Wherever you thought somebody was prophesying, I want to go and see what they got to say. Because you were looking for what was on the inside of you. (laughs) Are you ready for this? You're not ready. Listen to this. Put your hands up. The anointing to cast devils out. The issues that come to kingdom grace are not just natural and they're not just learned behaviors in people. Demonic strongholds are in the lives of people who are going to be drawn here. All you got to do is in the name of Jesus, you're going to cast out devils and watch people's lives absolutely turn around. Are you ready for the five-fold ministry? Fivefold ministry. The apostolic ministry is not a denomination. It's the people who embrace the fivefold. People are talking and saying that's only for the New Testament church. It stopped. It stopped then. It stopped. It stopped. I'm telling you, people in your camp are saying it stopped. It, that's just unnecessary. No, you have to be. You have to have seen Jesus. It stopped. It's. It stopped. It. It stopped. He said, I'm stopping their mouths. Shutting them up myself. Because you have been crazy enough, radical enough, and now hurt enough to go ahead and do. (laughs) Here's what he said. I don't have nothing to lose now. So I may as well be me, who God has called me to be. Oh, my God. 
hold on. Wait a minute. He's going back 18 years. He said, I owe you retroactive pay for what was taken from you. I'm going back 18 years. And I, the Lord, will fix and repair that wrong. You were wronged. You were wronged. God, God said, I'm about to fix it. Okay, he says, now, I, because I have to show people that you're my daughter. You're going to have proof and evidence that you're God's daughter. And no weapon formed against you will prosper. I'm placing a hedge around you. 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 You're going to have unusual and uncommon, unstoppable joy. Your focus will be fixed on him alone. You will hear from him alone. And you will know, I am God's favorite child. That's what we call ourselves, God's favorite child. Without any realm or any residue of the competition that's around you. There are a lot of competitive men around you in, in church, in, uh, in, in, in uh, your circles, in your circles. Very competitive, very competitive. And Lord said, I will rip their collars off before I allow them to continue talking about my daughter. Keep your mouth shut. Let me handle it for you in Jesus' name. Are you ready for this fivefold? All right. All right. I'm going to let the, the, the power twins lay hands on you. <laughs> in the name of Jesus, in the name of the Father, Son, y'all lay hands on their head. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. Everybody give God praise, y'all. somebody, if you said, touch somebody, tell them, say, be healed, be delivered, be set free in Jesus' name, right now. Now give God praise right now. Give him praise. 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 your feet and tell two or three people, be blessed, be healed, be delivered now. You don't know what your neighbor is going through. Come on, come on, come on. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. 